What is up, y'all? Merry Christmas. This is Alexander with Guns.com. With this season comes a lot of joy, a lot of fun, gift giving, and also some debates. One of those debates being, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Well, we at Guns.com definitely think that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. So we've got a couple of the guns here from Die Hard. It's kind of rare to get to look at a bunch of these different firearms, uh, but we have them all under one roof. So we're kind of going to take a look at some of these and just lay out this old Christmas classic in a, in a little bit of a different perspective. So let's check it out. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. In one of the first scenes in the film, we have Hans Gruber's henchmen taking over the Nakatomi Plaza. One of those henchmen, uh, Carl, who would be a later important character, uses a Walther PPK to execute one of the security guards in the bottom of the building. Here, we have a Walther PPK. The Walther PPK was designed in the late 1920s. It uh, served through World War II all the way up until modern day. It's chambered in 380 or uh, 22 and is often suppressed like it was in the film. This is a beautiful example of one. It's got these really nice kind of Bakelite style grips. This one here is chambered in 380 and uh, it's just one of the cool things that we've got here. Arguably one of the most important firearms in the film is the H&K P7. This is the sidearm of choice for the German bad guy Hans Gruber. And much like Hans Gruber, this firearm is also German. It's kind of an iconic design here. It's very interesting. Uh, it came to fruition after the Munich Massacre. And it's got this squeeze cocker uh, action, which is interesting and ultimately kind of led to the downfall of this firearm, or at least it not being accepted into, into wide service for a long period of time. But you'll see here that when you squeeze on the front handle, slide goes forward and it actually draws the striker back to fire. So the gun is safe unless the user squeezes down on that firearm uh, to get that purchase so that they can actuate the trigger. In the film, Hans Gruber actually had an, a P7M13 in stainless steel. That's the double stack version of the P7. Here we've just got the uh, single stack. These are very highly sought after kind of upper echelon firearms, but this is a beautiful example of one, uh, just a really well-built firearm. Now we're gonna go over some of the equipment carried by Sergeant Al Powell, who was there to help John McClane through his horrible night at Nakatomi Tower. One of his most trusted pieces of equipment is well, this is important, but this isn't what we're going to talk about. It's the Model 15 revolver. This revolver was one of the most common revolvers used by law enforcement. In fact, it was the standard issue revolver for LAPD for a long period of time. It's chambered in 38 Special. It has a six-shot or five-shot uh, capacity. And this one here is a Model 15-6 and is actually a law enforcement trade-in firearm. These are very cool, obviously really reliable, um, just a fun gun to kind of get out and shoot. And it's also interesting to look back and see at what uh, the equipment that law enforcement was using kind of back in the day. Probably one of the most obscure firearms from the movie is the Walther P5. The Walther P5 makes a very, very short uh, kind of entrance into the movie. It's carried by Heinrich one of the uh, terrorists who tries to chase John McClane into the boardroom, and he's immediately put down by John McClane, thus not getting a lot of screen time for this firearm. However, this is an extremely interesting, probably forgotten firearm in a lot of ways, much like it is in the movie. In real life, the P5 did not see a lot of commercial success. It's a design that's based off of the Walther P38. It has the same design principles. It doesn't have the browning tilting barrel. Uh, instead, it's a, it's a straight inline barrel with the gun 
and uh, this is something that the Germans really drove to be a, a more accurate option for a sidearm. However, uh, this firearm just, like I said, wasn't picked up by a lot of people, didn't see a lot of commercial success, but nonetheless, it's very cool, very interesting. It's a single stack firearm, uh, has nine, it's chambered nine millimeter, carries eight rounds in the magazine, has a lot of the same design features as the Walther P38. And uh, again, just a very cool, obscure piece of history and a really awesome example of German firearms manufacturing and design. It's a little complicated, but it's very well built, very reliable, and uh, just another cool thing to look at. Now on to one of the more iconic and uh, leading roles in the film, Die Hard. We have the Beretta 92F, which is the sidearm or the handgun for John McClane. In the film, it was supposed to be his police-issued handgun. However, the New York Police Department did not ever issue out the Beretta to their detectives or police officers. But it's kind of signifying that John McClane is in the more modern era, just like the people that he's kind of fighting and going up against. This is a semi-automatic handgun. This is actually a 92F, just like in the film, not the FS. The FS was developed a little bit after the 92F. Uh, there was actually a thought that there was a flaw in the design of the slide and uh, it was actually due to poor ammunition. So the 92 FS has a little more reinforced slide and a couple of different features. But like I said, this is an original F just like it was in the film. It's a double stack handgun. It's got a really cool uh, lock up and design. In fact, very similar uh, to the P38 as well. Um, just a really awesome handgun, super smooth shooting. Uh, very accurate and obviously served well as it was the standard issue firearm for the United States military for a long time. And it also saw a lot of success around the world through law enforcements and different militaries. But where would John McClane be without his trusty semi-automatic Beretta that he could tape to his back so he could finally shoot that bad guy? We have a bunch of these here, and uh, like I said, this is just a great firearm that you guys could take to the range. Makes for a good defense firearm, good duty firearm, and it's just a cool piece to have. Now here, next, we have a firearm that doesn't just make for a great shooter, but can be also used to repel down air ducts in case you need to. But in all seriousness, we have the H&K MP5. This particular one is an H&K SP5, which is the modern rendition of the HK available to the market now. In the film, they used HK-94s, uh, which were the version that HK was putting out at the time. The major difference between those two is the fact that the HK-94 doesn't have the flapper release. It just has the button release on the magazine. But for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much the same design. The MP5 or the SP5, this is an iconic submachine gun. Uh, the roller delay system in this makes for a very smooth and relaxed shooting firearm, low recoil. Um, this particular one is a pistol. It does not have a stock uh, like they have in the film. It doesn't have a brace either. However, I don't think that made much difference for them in the film since everybody shot it from the hip on full auto. But uh, anyways, this is just, again, one of those things that's really fun to get your hands on, to get a chance to take to the range. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive to shoot, it shoots 9mm, a very standard thing. There's a lot of aftermarket parts, so you can upgrade these things, put different hand guards, optics, muzzle devices, magazines, braces, or if you want to SBR things like this, there, there's that aftermarket support for these. Um, but anything from Navy SEALs all the way up to just home defense, uh, this firearm has stepped in to fill in those roles. And uh, it's very cool. The only thing that you want to be careful about these is if you're trying to take over Nakatomi Tower, you don't want to, you know, give one to John McClane because then he'll have a machine gun. With Carl on a vengeance to uh, take down John McClane for killing his brother and, well, riding all over his shirt, informing Hans Gruber that he has taken his machine gun. No. we see the introduction of the Steyr AUG into the film. In the movie, the AUG is the A1 version. Here we have the A3 or the M3 version. 
Uh, one of the interesting things about this firearm is, especially for the time period, this was extremely modern and uh, very new, very different. You don't see a lot of bullpups from that era. Nowadays, it's a little more common. Uh, people are starting to kind of catch on to the fad. We have different companies making all kinds of different ones, but back then, this is one of the few ones that was out there. It's a very cool design because while it's compact, you still get the full power of a rifle and you get this long barrel length. In fact, you can even make it more compact with a takedown switch here on the side. We can just pop the barrel out, as Carl did in the film to keep it in the bag, and then reassembled it as he went to chase down John McClane. Firearm also has this foregrip here. This foregrip can just fold up or fold down to aid the shooter in getting a better purchase on the firearm. When taking shots, overall, this is a great rifle. This is super cool to get to see in this film because again, this is kind of pushing into that more modern era and at the time, kind of that Hollywood gun uh, nostalgia, that Hollywood gun theme that wasn't exactly commonplace in the real world. Now, a little more commonplace but just a cool piece of, uh, of equipment here from Steyr, a company that's been around for over a century and is known for making quality um, firearms for militaries and law enforcement around the world. This is a rifle that is used by several different countries, including Austria. And uh, it's just an awesome thing to get to look at and see in the film. One of the last firearms that we're going to take a look here is the Steyr SSG-69. This particular one, or this model, was used by Special Agent Johnson in the helicopter as they approached Nakatomi Tower to try to uh, take out the terrorists there. Um, in the film, they had a night vision scope mounted. However, this one here is actually in a somewhat military configuration. It has a Swarovski scope on it, and uh, it has the 10-round magazine. These are chambered in 308. In fact, they have a similar action to the infield, having the locking lugs in the rear instead of the uh, front of the bolt. The problem with that is uh, that you can't really move up in the Magnum cartridges. You can only keep this in kind of those standard military marksman cartridges. However, it's got a pretty short throw in the bolt, making for a great kind of designated marksman or even sniper rifle. This particular rifle design was adopted by the Austrian military and it was also adopted by American BORTAC, that's a Border Patrol Tactical Teams, um, and is still in service today in different capacities with different nations around the world. It's very well built, like I said it's chambered in, in 308, so it's easy to get ammo and get a hold of, very accurate, pretty light, and it's really rare to get to see something like this in this configuration with this stock, with the bipod. It even still has the end cap cover that goes on the barrel to keep this protected. Uh, didn't make a huge impact in the film, but even though it's obscure, we still have it here at guns.com, so we wanted to bring it out and kind of show it off and uh, just let you see something that you really don't get to see often on the market or in the wild uh, very much. So. What a cool piece and uh, what a great note to kind of close this out on. So whether you need to take back the Nakatomi building from German terrorists or you're looking for a Christmas gift or you just want to find something to take to the range and have some fun with, be sure to check out guns.com because obviously we've got a really cool selection here. Thank you guys for uh, watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys later. Mr. McLean. What? These are for my wife. She's pregnant? Okay, just bag it up. I, I think I'm gonna need help with this.